proud of yourselves, splashes the mail, with a rogues gallery of last night's Tory rebels. Yes, should be their defiant reply. What's more, they are likely to do it again if the government is foolish enough to put forward other Brexit clauses that defy democratic scrutiny of this most vital decision. Next week they look set to reject the absurdity of fixing an arbitrary date of departure regardless of where we stand at the time. Mutiny, says the Telegraph, Revenge of the Rebels, blasts the Times. Nadine Dory's MP adds, they should be deselect and never allowed to stand as a Tory MP again. Good grief. Labour didn't even deselect Kate Hoye, the Farage-hugging serial rebel who appears to disagree with her party on everything, from fox hunting onwards. Last night's vote scraped by on a majority on four, so add praise to those four Labour Brexit pairs whom Jeremy Corbyn personally persuaded to rejoin their colleagues and back the Grieve Amendment. No one need be pro-remain to be swayed by powerful speeches, especially the one from Grieve warning of constitutional sabotage if everything in future can be fixed by fiat of the government of the day, by passing Parliament. So does she set off today to Brussels weekend? May undermined before Brussels trip warns the Times. No, she seeks a start to the next stage no longer at the mercy of hard Brexit guns to her head. Parliament's refusal to march to the extremists' drumbeat gives her flexibility to strike a deal that does least harm. Where is the will of the people in the complex negotiations ahead? Yesterday, a serious piece of research, funded by the Economic and Social Research Council, published the findings of a citizens' assembly, throwing far deeper insight into Brexit attitudes than crude opinion polls. Fifty citizens scientifically selected for age, class, region, and politics slightly more levers than remainers were given extensive information on options ahead by diverse experts and economists, overseen for neutrality by an advisory panel including Bernard Jenkin and Hilary Benn. After four days of debate, with a chance to question whomever they liked, they were not asked to rerun the crude in or out referendum vote, they were asked about the options and trade offs to come such as between the balance of controlling migration and getting a good trade deal. Over four days, they explored fiendish intricacies the referendum ignored, paying into the EU, workers and environment rights, Ireland, the economy, public services, UK autonomy and more. Their final opinions were a country mile away from mail and telegraph headlines.